Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's episode of Turtlecast. With nice shirt, bro. With Jason and Alex. <laughs> with Jason and Alex. That's the second compliment I got on it today. Today? Yeah. Today alone. I like the silver neck. Is that silver necklace? What, no, so, no, the necklace is actually gold. It's tarnished and they got the gold coin. Oh, okay. So it's a little tarnished. But I like the yeah. necklace with the shirt. Yeah. I think that looks... And the old school. We both have Casio watches on, huh? Yeah, I felt like... I Listen, because uh, I have that other watch. Right. I don't sound like a... Like a I guess I can't say that. <laughs> I'll bleep that out. <laughs> he has a luxury watch. Yeah, yeah, I got a luxury watch. But um, I was like, I just need something to work out with because I can't be running around with right. a Rolex. So yeah, it makes it nice. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I got, I paid twenty bucks for this thing and it lasts for ten years. Yeah. It's got a ten year battery. A, that's the same with these like G Shocks. I mean, you get we <laughs> literally go roll roll this over in a car. It's so yeah. funny. <laughs> my car doesn't have a ten year battery. <laughs> in it, no. You know, <laughs> I just things in my body don't last ten years. <laughs> no, they it's don't. actually this the dog chewing on the bone right here. That's not going to last. Yeah, 10 we years. have a dog here. You guys can't see it, but we have a dog chewing on a bone. He's adorable. Mm-hmm. It's a yellow dog. Yeah, yeah, good boy. Yeah, he's not a gangster vegan. He's just a gangster. Yeah, he's just a gangster. <laughs> he's a total street dog. Yeah, that's awesome. Look at the way he's looking at you, though. Yeah, he's like, uh, what, what? so what mixes is, is it? Uh, he's a blue healer border collie. Yeah, so you guys can get, we'll have to put a picture of him. Yeah, we will on all the slap, I'll slap yeah. up on the, <laughs> the green screen. That'd be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he's too smart for his own good. Uh, last time he was here in our studio. Yeah. He, Took uh, a dump right in the studio. <laughs> yeah, it was awesome. I, I was make, like, hmm, that smells I, delicious. <laughs> I had to make sure that he was totally emptied before he brought it I just like that he was comfortable enough to be able to. Maybe it was just like a sign of respect. Yes, exactly. Maybe Sometimes. we read it wrong yes. as human beings. Dogs he, are just like, hey. He came in and he was like, oh, Jason, I'm, you know, I'm very <laughs> comfortable here. You know. So if you hear any like chomping sounds, that's him <laughs> playing. He's having a right grand now, old yeah. time. Oh, now he's like, oh, no. He's trying to lick my Red Bull. And that's all he that wants. Way, yeah, what, it's sugar-free, though, so he'll be fine. <laughs> so let's get into, because uh, we could joke around and waste our viewers. Speaking of, we have 10,000 viewers. Booyah. Today. So Isn't that fantastic? Awesome. In a month. In a month. I think From I'm, your videos, bro. I'm happy that the educational material we're putting out there is actually, you know, it's getting reached. People are mm-hmm. actually, you know, internalizing it. And that's all that matters. It's like, it's you don't change... You know, you're not changing the whole world's mind at once. I'd love if we could, but, you know, 10,000 people is fantastic. Yes, and that and that's what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, and just so everyone knows, I didn't fluff that up. I don't have time to sit around and watch my, same, my videos for, you know, 10,000 views. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to talk about something that um, I think we can relate with the dog. Yeah. So there was uh, two toys here, and he grabbed both of them. <laughs> yeah. And he, because he's like, these are both mine. And, and it's that <laughs> mindset of this is mine. It's like a hoarding mindset. Yeah, it's a hoarding mindset, and there's scarcity involved. Yeah. And so what we're going to talk about today is decentralization. It, and it's that's it's an important concept because there's a big social change going on with decentralization. It's um, people want their power back. Right. You know, if they feel like they've been like raked through the coals for so long, lied to, abused, you know, taken as a number rather than a human being. And they're like, you know something? I need to take control of my life. Whether it's like I'm selling my, you know, my house and I'm going to go buy a van and I'm not going to have any debt, you know. Right. I want to. I want to get out of that system. I don't want right. to be a part of those systems. Right. You know. I want to manage everything that you know. I frankly, I deserve to have sovereignty over. Right. So when we're looking at decentralization, it's a really hot topic with a lot that's going on because the social change plays into the mindset of how people are beginning to design technology. Right. So if we're looking at that technological design, you know, decentralization. That's where we're going headed forward. So that's what we need to look to. We need to look to, you know, something that is equanimous. Right. Ooh, big word. Right. Love that. Uh, something, you know, it's fair and balanced and having that sort of model needs to apply to the design and what we're doing and, you know, how should we should respectfully, you know, treat certain assets like data itself. Yeah. And I, I think having that compassionate component. Yeah. You know, and, and, and we can get into AI, machine learning and all that. And, and we'll get into blockchain a little bit with decentralization and Tartle. Mm-hmm. But I, I kind of want to give a definition of centralization. Yeah, decentralization please do. Is the process by which the activities of an organization particularly those regarding planning and decision-making, are distributed or delegated away from a central, authoritative location or group. Right. So it's not anarchy. Right. You know, it's nice to have laws in place, fair laws, laws that make reasonable sense. But for the majority of other things, you know, taking the choice away from people that are making it for you, that's the rub. Right. Right. That's the real rub. That's the that's the tech rub. That's the social rub. That's the emotional one. And then, you know, you start to see how 
that sort of change is rubbing off into, you know, politics and everyday life and, you know, everything else that's going on. So when we're, we're moving, you know, the choice back into the hands of an individual, there's a lot of positive benefits that can come from that, right? So, and also it can decrease a lot of risks at the same time. And it's not saying that, okay, if we take it away from a central authority, you know, there's not all eyes on it, you know, things will get out of control. It's like, no, because of the availability of technology today, we can efficiently decentralize things while still maintaining the amount of safety that is required to run that sort of norm in society. Where before, if you're decentralizing everything, go, you know, it's kind of like a Wild West view. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, but now we have the ability to still remain that interconnectedness, but there's no reason to silo things anymore. So if we're like, say, you know, I'm just going to use data because it's an easy example. If we're going to start putting all of our information into one place, like Experian, and then someone hacks their database, well, they've been holding on to everything. They literally piled everything into one thing, so it's a huge risk. It's sitting there. It's like a big target, and it's like, you know, come hack me. Come take my information. Right. It's worth a lot. Um, but if you take it and you containerize these things in different areas, you get this like network mapped system that can support itself and it can still transfer information just as efficiently as something that was siloed, if not better. But the thing is, it becomes much more difficult to hack and break down and get into because now you have enhanced security standards upon all these little small things. So rather than just having to break through the wall of one thing, I have to break through 10 million walls. Right. That just makes a heck of a lot more sense. And at the same time, you can offer all the social good, you know, the value back to the people that actually deserve it while decreasing the risk and, you know, storing information or data at the same time, that's a big win. So those sort of mindsets and framework play into things even like currencies. Because you, you, you had mentioned, you know, like uh, for blockchain, right? There's nodes that are all over the world that support this currency system that runs across the internet. So it's all these people saying, okay, we believe there's a value in it. We're here to support it. And if one node goes down, another one can come up and take its place. Mm -hmm. And all those nodes will verify one single chain of information to say that this transaction happened. So yes, there's a central, you know, piece of information that is strung throughout, but it's all supported by everywhere across the globe. So it shows you the power in decentralizing something because it affords that efficiency and the ability for everyone to come in and be a part of that system. Rather than if you, you know, you centralize it in a silo, it limits the amount of people that can come in and actually play with that asset, you know, or that opportunity, whatever it might be. Yeah, and a lot of people think of, you know, like uh, Bitcoin or and I know there's a lot of um, currencies that are out there, you yeah. know, on online and so some of them will be here. Ethereum, Litecoin, yeah, right, Dogecoin, exactly. all that stuff. Yeah, so... But a lot of people don't realize when it comes to blockchain, I want you to talk about this, but I'm going to give a, a, a good example for I love humanity. I examples, yeah. Um, with how blockchain may work, which is currency is just a part of it. So there was a human trafficking ring here in the United States, mm -hmm. and they were using a website that's current, you know, it's currently down now. It was called Backpage. Okay. And so what they found was people were uh, using Bitcoin to purchase um, ads on Backpage. To, okay. Uh, but they were using the same ads depending on, you know, the kids or the girls, the prostitution that rings that were going on, they found that what, so what they found with blockchain was when they went in and started looking at, you know, ID verifications and stuff like that and ledgers, yes, you know, cause blockchains have ledgers in them. They were looking at these ledgers were all, you know, thousands and thousands of dollars of the same ledger coming from one central place yeah. going throughout all the big cities in the United States. Right. So they were able to put that all together and then able to say, oh, okay, we have all this information, you know, authorities. Um, you have human trafficking going on with this organization. And they're using, you know, Bitcoin or whatever, blockchain, and then they're turning around and um, they were able to take that and find where they were at and all that. And, and, and I'm, I'm, you know, it's a good story. I'm so glad you brought that up because everyone's like, oh, terrorists will use cryptocurrencies right, and all right. this other stuff. Well, if you think about it, you've given power back to individuals to anonymously make a transaction. But the thing is, because it's decentralized, because it's sustainable, and because it's a socially inherited value of this currency, you have the ability to create a map. And so an IP map of these nodes. Right. So I know that because this ledger is verified, it says that this node, it came from here. Right. So you can actually see every single time that you have consistent numbers of people buying this ad that someone in this general area or this node's being processed is the person that is running this ring. Right. And so if anything, it was a much faster way to crack down on a ring yes, of people exactly. creating a crime, a, a very you know dehumanistic crime, a very terrible moral crime, 
at a much faster rate than people that would be just transacting in yeah, cash. Yeah, could you imagine each city trying to... No, it'd be a nightmare uh, to um, get all the different... You know, each detective from oh, each police yeah. department and each city trying to figure this all out, and they were able to... So, I Because everybody thinks dark web and they think no. you know um you know everybody uses bitcoin to sell drugs that's a and news stuff. that's yeah. a news spin. yes what you find is that this de- decentralization it created such inefficiency in this system that it afforded us the opportunity to prevent more people from getting pulled into essentially a siloed system of you right. know, trafficking human or sex trafficking right. that's a huge benefit you know the it offers you the anonymity right, right. But if you're creating, if you're doing bad things, people will still find out. But we can just do it in a, fa- in a faster manner. But I, I think it's just absolutely fantastic that it shows you that, you know, it compared to the rate of speed in whatever is being processed in a centralized system and getting all of those resources together, you instantaneously pulled the resources of all the decentralized nodes together to solve an issue. That's a big benefit of decentralization. So not only can we help fight that crime, right, right. But we can have a system that is extremely resilient, that gives people opportunity, and it. Um, I, I, frankly, that's it. That's all. You, I don't. Really, yeah, but I, else but I mean, when, whenever you're looking at, uh, especially when we look at Turtle, yeah, and we look at the philosophy of what the company is about, mm-hmm. and you're looking at being worldwide, correct. This is the way to accomplish that. Yeah, that's how you would want to accomplish that. We can't be hypocritical in what we do, right? So. When you look at data, you know, data is a decentralized thing. People, it's, companies have tried to silo it. Yes. So that they can hoard it like the dog is hoarding the, the bones right now. Right, right, in right. The room. And, you know, they're like, I, I want this. And then I want to get the resource out of it. He's getting his energy by chewing the bone. It's, you know, pleasing him emotionally. And that's would only benefit that one company or that one dog. But what we're saying is when you look at data, if you allow it to be decentralized, put the power back to the people, you can give that emotional benefit to 7 billion people across the globe. Right, you can give them the opportunity across the globe to do so, and at the same time, you can pair that with a currency that shares the same characteristics, and that's when you have something beautiful. Now you have something that doesn't, you know, butt heads against itself. There's no philosophical ideologies that don't match, or the economics of it, or the fungibility of the system. Right. That's why we choose to have Bitcoin as a cryptocurrency. It just makes more sense. Yeah, and I think with the when you look at the blockchain too, in the sense of when you're looking at um, whether we're in India or Russia or China or Singapore, wherever it may be, um, in the UK, yes. we were working with some ads in the United Kingdom <laughs> this week. Yeah. Google's been a pain about that. <laughs> but um, when, whenever you're lo- whenever you're looking at that, it, you want to have that consistency and be able to make those transactions, you know, um, as quickly as possible. So the efficiency and consistency is yeah. is where we have, and it, and it becomes worldwide. Cross border consistency. It's it's a really funny concept because decentralization says like, okay. We're not going to unify anybody. We're pulling it all away from right. unification. It actually is a more unifying principle because you've you know, leveled the playing field perfectly. And now everybody, regardless of border, can interact with one another. They can share and find opportunity. That's a very unifying principle. And a lot of people don't realize with blockchain, you can share data. I'm going to give you a prime example. Mm-hmm. Um, you can share data and encrypt the user. Of course. So, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I don't think a lot of people realize that because so what happens is like for now, you know, you have all these silos with COVID-19 we're, we're, we're having that issue. And, and I believe within a year we'll probably have, they'll have vaccines and all that stuff. Right. So, I mean, we've got other issues like malaria. We've thrown billions of dollars at seven, figured that out. Yeah. Um, we have human trafficking. We have a lot of bigger issues, uh, um, s- food s- issues, nutrition, water. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of other issues that are out there. And I, I think, um, as we get um, AI, machine learning, and all that, that, and we get more de- decentralization, where this data can be shared. Yeah. See, that's the key right now. Like you said, is every company when they do a study, um, they're they're, they're taking that and siloing it. So if Correct. it's John Hopkins, they have that they have that information. That's a that great data. example. Yeah. Um, and if once that you could say, oh, okay, it's anonymous users. Let's put this all um, put this data together. Now you have scientists all across the the world. You know not just the United States, but all across the world are able to take that data. And now you have the ability to be able to have the synchronicity yes. to, um, to create something amazing. Yeah. And you have to trust those people, right? You have to trust that everyone across the globe will share that info. It's not for you for, to make the decision that you were going to be the heroes. Everybody's their own hero. It's their right. information. It's what they created. If they want to be part of a society that elevates themselves, let them do that. And but not be part of a silo that just looks for shareholder profit. 
Yeah, and, and that's, <laughs> honestly, that's the old game. Yes. And I'm saying game because that's exactly what it is. That's the drama they want to live in. Now we want to move into a reality that makes a lot more sense. A reality that's that's truly balanced and that affords that opportunity. And decentralization is a step. It's a step right. in the mind step. It's a step in economics. It's a step in the social change of everybody and how we interact. And, and it's elevating humanity. And that's what Tartle is all about. And we want to elevate humanity. And I appreciate that. And you understand that. And, you know, that's where the design comes from. That's the purpose. And if we follow through with that, something that truly works, and we've seen the data shows that it's a system that truly works, that's something we should all be pursuing. I love that. That's a model that needs to be focused on. That's perfect. That was awesome. Can we yep. end on that? Yes, let's do it. All right, cool yeah. deal. Thanks, everybody. Yep, thanks.